Jonathan Hallam. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, students, DIY enthusiasts. I'm going to talk to you briefly now about cold water incoming services. Okay, I've got a few, a few visual aids to show you here. First thing I'd like to talk about is the underground pipe work, MDPE, medium density pipe. It's 25 mil. It should be bedded below 750, higher than 1350 mil. If you can't get it below 750, you have to inform the water board. You have to insulate it as well. You can't if install any form of underground water services near cesspools, contaminated areas such as petrol. You have to avoid manhole covers, you have to go around them, not under them, not through them. This is a brief fitting I've got to show you now. So, like all plastic pipe, you have to have an insert to prevent it collapsing and to aid it when it expands. Inserts always go in quite easily. You have a grab ring and a nut. You have a carbon washer inside the component. If need be, you can always put some lubrication on it as well. It simply just pushes in. Like so. Always pressure test and check for soundness, check there's no leaks before backfilling a hole to prevent further issues. Whenever you use plastic pipe to conform, conform with the manufacturing instructions, always use the appropriate fittings to cut it. For example, I've got a plastic pipe cutter here, and if you observe me doing it, look. That's cut the pipe nice and clean and square. You don't have to deburr it, fire the edges, so that can push straight through or past an O ring without damaging it. If you're using copper pipe underground, the copper pipe that you're using must be table Y because it's flexible, it can bend easier. Compression fittings underground must be type B, manipulative, which is where you sway the end open and you use a thicker olive, which is almost internal. As you can see, there's no possible way through subsidence that olive can be pulled off. So that is the key factor for underground pipe work. Ferrules and water supplies are usually in a PVC chamber, 150 mm in diameter. This is just an example. And it's usually located at the bottom of the chamber. So whenever you lift the, the, the flap up in the street, you'll find a frost cap, like so. This is polystyrene. It's essential that you reinstall this. This is there for a purpose. It prevents water flooding the stop tap, which could be an issue if it freezes, and it prevents dirt and debris blocking up the chamber. If you go to some properties you'll find you have to call out the water board to clean the hole out because there's no possible way you can get access to the stop tap. Just here I've got a ferrule key to put down the chamber and isolate the supply. Too many engineers make the mistake of lifting up the chamber and leaving the ferrule key inside. That is a liability for pedestrians walking past. So always make sure you turn the water off, you close the lid. So here's a little visual aid I've made. So you've got the incoming main coming through a ducted sleeve, obviously between 750 and 1350. The ducting is to prevent any damage through subsidence or collapse of the foundation. And it should be sealed at both the, the entrance and the outlet of the, of the ducting. That's to prevent vermin getting in to allow for expansion. If this stop tap incoming made is within 750mm of the stop tap and the outside of the, of the dwelling, it requires insulation to prevent freezing. The incoming main should be 20 degrees. Okay? If it's higher than that, you're breaking the water regulations. 25 is the maximum. If it's 25, you should really insulate it. Just here, we've got a water meter. I've got a stop tap installed above and below the water meter. This is for maintenance purposes. So you can isolate the water supply to the meter and you can isolate the water supply 
from the rising main in the dwelling. This will prevent water falling back on you while you're carrying out your maintenance duties. So you've got a bit of a, more of a dry area to work in. I've got an earth, earth clamp and cable, 10 mil square. So if this meter is ever removed for maintenance purposes, you've still got a continuity of earth to prevent electrocution. Just like gas meters, if you take a gas meter out, you should have earth clamping. In my installation, I've put the drain off valve. This is a male line with a packing gland. I put this above the meter so the tenant or the owner cannot get free water if it was underneath. So that's why it's above. I've teed in to the outside tap. Usually the kitchen sink is the first to be teed off for potable drinking water. And from the outside tap, if you can look at the side view, it's a bib tap and it's on a wall plate elbow. I always install wall plate elbows because personally I think it looks more professional and it's more solid and secure. An outside tap is outside a dwelling or a property. So that is affecting your reputation because people can see it. So that's for, for strength. A bib tap should have a dual check valve installed. If it hasn't got a double check valve installed, the quickest, simplest solution would be to remove the nozzle, preventing hose pipes and contamination. If you haven't got a double check valve installed, I suggest you put one on the pipe work, double check valve. For level 3 learners, that's an EC verifiable or an ED non verifiable. And you should also have a servicing valve. So you can turn it off in the winter periods. If it's, if it's accessible to the public, you should be able to turn it off to prevent vandalism. Outside taps must also point downwards as well, so you can open it up and drain the water out. You should, almost, you should always inform the customers that taps should always be working for maintenance purposes. And if a tap is dripping, they're actually breaking the water regulations. Regulation 3. Wastage of water. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that little presentation. Stay positive, stay professional, and hope you keep watching my videos. Thank you very much.